Okay, so this is problem eight uh, of homework three. Um, and so I, th this is on your screen, the statement is on the screen. You can, if you want to pause the video and take a deeper look. Uh, but the problem essentially states that, uh, I, so there's a professor who has found two exams who, which are unnamed. So, but there are only two students in the class and the, it's the job of the professor to try to use uh, Bayesian theory, uh, Bayesian inference um, to estimate which one of the papers belong belongs to which uh, student. Um, what the professor knows is uh, some priors or some probabilities uh, with which, for example, Khurram answers a, a question correctly. So Khurram answers a, uh, a question correctly with the probability of 0.75, uh, while Talha answers uh, any given part of the problem, uh, any given uh, problem, MCQ problem, with the probability of, correctly with the probability of 0.9, okay? Um, there's independence between the users. Uh, this is all stated here. Um, and given the observations, our job is to estimate which one of the exams uh, belongs uh, to which one of the students, okay? So let me just uh, state some of the uh, things that were available, we have available. So let's say, uh, so let um, the, the number of uh, correct answers, um, on, on exam one, uh, that be represented by, denoted by X1. And that's actually a random variable. Uh, we, we said there's a certain probability that we're, uh, with which this is equal to gonna be, gonna be equal to something. Um, and so X1 um, is, is equal to, uh, is equal to what? is equal to 10, right? So all of the answers are uh, correct on exam one. Uh, and similarly, uh, let the number of uh, correct answers on exam two uh, be denoted by X2, and that is X, that is six, right? And we also know that, let's say the professor knows exactly which one of the answers are correct, which one of the answers are not correct, okay? Um, uh, even if he doesn't know. So let's say he just knows the number, okay? Uh, now our job is to, once again, infer. Now there's a, the reason why I wanted to record this tutorial is because there's a, there's a common misconception or an error that many students, I've seen students making, which is uh, the following. So I've seen students do the following. They would say, let me just pick exam one, right? And let me compute the probability with which this exam belongs to Khurram. And let me compute the probability with which this exam belongs to Talha, right? And between these two probabilities, which one of whichever one of these two turns out to be greater than 0.5, that is going to be my decision. And by default, therefore, the other exam belongs to the other student, right? So that's what typically students would do. So so if I if I just write this out, uh, what they would do is uh, I'm writing this out in red because this is not the right approach. They would say is well, I would compute the probability that exam one belongs to, uh, for example, Talha, uh, given that the exam one has ten uh, problem statements, uh, that ten problems attempted correctly, and I would also compute the the probability that the exam one belongs to Khuram, and given that I know that this is these are 10 of these problems are answered correctly. Uh, and I will just compare the two. And if this is greater than I, my decision is going to be Talha. And otherwise my decision is going to be Khuram. And what, which whenever of these two turns out to be higher, for example, if the probability this bit exam belongs to Talha turns out to be higher, then exam two, therefore that conclusion the students make is that exam two must belong to, uh, belong to Khuram and exam one to Talha. However, this is not correct. Why? Because you cannot uh, take the exams independently of each other. You cannot make the decisions on these independently of each other as well. Because by uh, the same argument, you could have done the same thing as well with the exam two. You could have said, what is the probability that exam two belongs to Talha given X2 equals six. And I can just compare this, this thing here, X2 equals six, and then say, okay, this is my decision Talha here, and this is my decision Khurram here, okay? Now you could have 
So now you have two decisions which are being taken independently of each other. Now my question to you or the problem here is going to arise in situations where say the first condition and the second condition and because it's quite possible both of them yield the same estimate right both of them yield yield the estimate for example that x that the exam 1 belongs to talha and the second statement also yields the inference that exam 2 also belongs to talha which i know is not possible so i need to somehow Uh, somehow consider, or I know for a fact, and which I need to incorporate my inference, that the exams, if the one exam belongs to Talha, the other one must belong to uh, Khurram. Okay, so therefore I need to consider things jointly, and the correct way of going about this is to deal with joint probabilities. And where what I mean by that is, I would need to compute the probability that. the exam 1 for example belongs to talha and exam 2 belongs to khurram so i need to compute this joint probability that exam 1 belongs to talha and exam 2 belongs to khurram given the observation that i have and the observation i have is x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 6 so this is the correct matrix that i should use for my inference and i should compare this with another matrix or another probability which is what with that exam 1 belongs to khurram so the complementary condition which is exam 2 belongs to talha given the same observation the observation is similar in both cases okay uh, so and i i compared these two and which one of whatever is greater um, if this should mean ki ji exam 1 is talha's and exam 2 is khurram's and the bottom what would mean that exam 1 is khurram's and exam 2 is talha so this is uh, what we need to compute so next um, i'm just going to compute one of these probabilities actually so let's compute both of these probabilities uh, using bayes theorem so i need to compute this thing here the probability that this is equal to talha exam 1 belongs to talha exam 2 belongs to khurram given that x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 6 I'll use Bayes' theorem here to um, to conclude that this is equal to this probability is equal to x one equals ten, x two equals six. Given e one equals t, uh, e two equals k times the probability that e one equals t and e two equals k divided by some constant. All right, so that some constant is actually is equal to the probability of x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 6 which is independent of the hypothesis right so this does not depend on the hypothesis that's why i said that this is um, this is a constant now what does this is probability on out to be equal to uh, this is going to be equal to uh, using the assumption that the exams are attempted independently so this is equal to probability that x1 equals 10 given e1 equals talha times the probability that x2 equals 6 given e2 if the exam 2 belongs to khurram uh, times the probability that exam 1 equals talha and exam 2 equal to khurram and that's just a probability equal to half because i'm assuming that this equally likely uh, the, the two cases there are only two hypotheses i need to test and each one of those two hypotheses are equally likely so this is probability half um and then uh there's a and there's this thing here which is the probability that x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 6 right now what is the probability that x1 equals 10 uh, given e1 equals uh, talha so the exam belongs to talha that is just equal to 0.9 uh so talha is yeah 0.9 raised to power 10 the times probability x2 equals 6 and e uh, given that exam 2 belongs to khurram uh, this is just 10 choose 6 because that's a that's nothing but a binomial random variable uh, and this is 0.75 raised to power 6 times 0.25 raised to power 4 Uh, divided by 
2 times probability x1 equals 10 and x2 equals 6. And for a moment, uh, let me lump all of these things together, uh, these things together into one constant and let me call that as C. And the reason why I call it it's C is because this is independent of what the hypothesis is. And this is gonna make my life a little bit easier um, as far as evaluations are concerned. So this is, um, this is 0.9 raised to power 10 um, and times 0.75 raised to power six times 0 0.25 10 raised to power four times C, some constant C, okay? Some constant C. So this is the hypothesis that the exam one belongs to Talha and, and exam two belongs to Khuram. And I'll do exactly the same thing here with probability that exam two, so exam one belongs to Khuram and exam two belongs to Talha given the observation that X1 equals 10 and X2 equals like the same observation. And you go all through the steps, you're gonna find that this is nothing but the same constant, exactly the same constant as, as we had earlier. Uh, the same constant here is a C. And this is 0.75 uh, raised to part 10. And this is 0.9 raised to part six times 0 0.1 raised to part four, All right? Um, and then the question is, okay, uh, how do we determine this constant C? I mean, you can you can determine this constant C by using the total law of probability if you wish. Uh, I would rather just use the fact that these two probabilities these two probabilities, this and this one here must sum to one, right? Um, so one and two must sum to one, right? And from here, you could evaluate the, the what the constant C turns out to be. Um, and um, so, uh, so C would just simply be equal to, um, yeah. So one upon uh, one upon this thing here, one upon this thing here plus this thing here, and that would give you C. And you go through that result. It turns out uh, the probabilities. I'm just going to write down the result directly. It turns out the probability that exam one belongs to Talha and exam two belongs to Khuram given X1 equals 10 and X2 equals six. Um, this turns out to be by my calculations, uh, which hopefully uh, are correct, um, turns out to be equal to 0 0.9878. Um, and, and therefore, of course, the probability that exam one belongs to Khuram, the other hypothesis, uh, this is going to be equal to one minus that. And this turns out to be equal to 0 0.0122. Um, and I think I may have a value for C over here as well, just for you uh, to verify your solutions as well. Um, C turns out to be equal to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, 1.227 into 10 is to power minus four. And I think there's a, there's a two here. So I'm not exactly sure about this. Um, so I think these are correct, but, but you get the point, right? So, so based on what uh, the computations and R to be our estimate is gonna be this one here. This is the best estimate. This is the most uh, likely estimate that could have happened, right? So most likely the exam one belongs to Talha and exam two belongs to Khuram, right? And and the B part was re really, really simple. The B probability just says, Kiri, given that you have made this decision, whatever the decision you made, which was exam one is Talha's and exam two is Khuram's, what is the probability with which you're gonna make an error? And that probability of error is of course the probability that what you made the decision was not true, and and the prob uh, and the other one hypothesis were true, which is just simply um, so the probability of error in this case is just simply going to be equal to zero point zero one 
to two, which is a probability that actually the exam one would, would was would belong to Khurram and exam uh, two belong to uh, Talha. So let me fix this typo here. So this is two. And this is how you do uh, Bayesian inference. 